Welcome to the Metaphysical Manifesting Podcast with intuitive light worker, national speaker, metaphysical teacher, and best selling author Lisa Kessler. What is it you want to manifest? Are you looking to increase your income, change careers? Maybe you want to manifest a new home or a new car. Are you ready to bring love into your life? You have come to the right place. Hey, everybody. Tonight, we're going to talk about divine timing. This is one of my favorite subjects, so <laughs> so prepare. I might get a little excited. But anyway, let's talk about divine timing. First off, what is it? A lot of people aren't sure, but divine timing is basically that everything happens for a reason, that the universe has a plan and you have a path to walk in your life and we do have free will so there are plenty of times that the universe keeps nudging us and we keep going nope 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 (laughs) so that totally happens too but but basically it's everything in your life happens at exactly the right time that's divine timing i used to when i worked in a metaphysical shop joanne who owned the place used to always say everything is in divine order and that always brought me a lot of peace because you know even when things seem a little out of control it's it's nice to recenter yourself and go everything is in divine order because divine timing never ever lets you down it's always there ways to show that that works is sometimes something might happen that seems like a disappointment at the time and then a few weeks later you realize oh thank goodness that didn't happen that kind of stuff happens in publishing all the time in the beginning when you're submitting everything and you're like please please this agent please please this publisher and then you keep getting these no's but then when you finally get the yes you're like Oh my gosh, I'm so glad I didn't go with that other publisher or thank goodness I didn't go with that first agent that I pitched, right? Because the universe was looking out for you. So sometimes when we get these disappointments, it, it, it doesn't feel good, but there's a reason for that. You just don't know it yet. So this came up to me because I was running a Kickstarter and It ran in October, from October 1st to October 31st, so I had 30 days. It was for, to me, it was a lot of money. It was $10,000 because I had to pay the artist for the tarot deck, and I also had to pay to have the decks printed and made. So really, that was barely enough. I wouldn't have made any money, but I wanted it to happen so badly, and I worked so hard on it. It was a month of stress and pressure and constantly trying to get the word out and making graphics, and it was just, it was a lot of work. And I felt like it was supposed to happen that the you know the universe wants this deck to happen i met the illustrator at just the right time and kickstarter said they were going to be promoting divination tools for witch starter which they did not promote in the end but anyway <laughs> they lured us to all do it in october and all of these things right and so It started off really strong and I thought, oh my gosh, it's going to work. We hit halfway and and I don't remember how many days now, but it was much less than halfway of time. So I thought, oh my gosh, it's going to go. It's going to be great. I was so sure. And then about around the 15, 20 day mark, the backers started to slow down. And we got so close, heartbreakingly close. <laughs> um, we got over $8,700. So it was over almost 88% funded. But Kickstarter is an all or nothing platform. So you either get funded or you get nothing. So even though over 100 people backed this project and it had over, you know, 88, per, it had almost 88% funded, you get nothing. So, (laughs) this is where divine timing comes in. (laughs) At least I hope. (laughs) But, was I disappointed? Yes, yes I was disappointed. But, I really do believe in divine timing and I feel like, well, it wasn't time for it yet. 
I know the deck is good. I know it's going to be amazing. I've gotten so many cool messages from people going, please still do the deck, please. You know, and there were other people on Kickstarter who have done many tarot decks who reached out to me and started putting me in their updates because they believed in the deck. So I know the deck is going to be great. So I don't feel bad about that. So I have to believe that the timing was off. And so I'm going to do it again in January. And I've been telling everybody, you know, go like the Facebook page because I did learn a lot. I'm going to do some Facebook ads next time. And, and, but it made me think about how we react to things because so much in life we have no control over. The only thing we can really control is how it affects us, right? How you choose to react to something. And that is where understanding divine timing can really help. Because I could have sat around beating myself up for even trying. Why did I even do this? What a waste of time. I put off a book that was supposed to come out. I moved all my publishing dates because I thought I was going to be making this tarot deck. And, you know, so I could have beat myself up a hundred different ways that this was a waste of time. Why did I do this? Feel bad for the artist. I, I could have gone down that road. However, <laughs> I cannot force people to back anything. I can't force Kickstarter to show it more. I can't, I have no control over any of that. All I have control over is my reaction to it. And my reaction to it, because I believe everything happens at just the right time, the timing was just off. So I, I'm not beating myself up. In fact, I am really proud of myself for trying. I'm proud of myself for not listening to that fear of failure because believe me, it's there. <laughs> we all have it. We all have that negative voice in our head that tells us you can't do it. You're not good enough. You, you know, you don't know what you're doing. We all have that. I certainly have that, but I, <laughs> I have a, a manifesting client that we were talking over the weekend and something came out of love yourself enough to try. And I don't know where that came from, but I had written it down for her. And I do feel like we need to do that so much more. Love yourself enough to try because we all get scared. We all have fear of failure. We all have that voice in our head saying we're not good enough or we don't know what we're doing. But if you love yourself enough to try, you can't fail. You just can't. Maybe the timing will be off like this Kickstarter. But I didn't fail. I went after it, right? And so it's not a failure. It just wasn't time yet. And it can go the other way as well. It can be, there have been plenty of times when something came into my life that was a little out of my comfort zone. And I thought, Ooh, I don't know, but it keeps showing up. There's signs, all the stuff. And if you ignore it, the universe will keep going, hello, hello, hello. I'm going to throw out a 5K. So came up in my Facebook memories recently, and I'm like, gosh, that was like the craziest thing I've ever done. But there was a zombie 5K. And my writer friends at the time, I was in San Diego, and it, it came up, and and I thought, I have never run a 5K in my whole life. Don't even really like running, but I really want to do this zombie run. And at first, all my, all my writer friends were like, yeah, we'll train. We'll do all this stuff. And one by one, they, you know, got busy. They did all this other stuff. And I was left with, am I going to do this zombie 5K? Really, Lisa? You don't even run. But, <laughs> but I, before I could back out, I was getting, I mean, it was so strange, but in my Facebook feed, I would see, you know, this friend finished a 5K, this friend finished a 5K. There, all my ads were all for the zombie 5K, and I was seeing commercials on TV and hearing them on the radio, and I'm like, okay, okay, universe, I hear you. So, so I went ahead and entered because I knew if I spent money on it, I'll do it. That is often a great way for you to take that leap of faith. Is you, you invest in it and then you are committed, right? So I invested in this zombie 5K. And I went to the track and you know what? That was the most I've ever exercised continuously and always showing up ever. 
<laughs> because I had this zombie 5k. And so, you know what? I did it. I did it. It was amazing. And, and I never thought I could, but I loved myself enough to try. Right. And the universe was obviously pushing me in that direction. And I ended that knowing that I can, right. I didn't have to win. I didn't even have to be the fastest, but when I got to that zombie run, it was like uphill and I had been training on a track at, at the high school. I looked up at the hill and I looked at my husband and said, I did not train for this. But, but so many people were like throwing up on that mountain and I did not. So I felt like this is a huge win. Go me, right? So when divine timing, when the universe wants your path to make a turn and you try to resist, that's when the universe gets really noisy and you'll see signs everywhere and it will be harder and harder for you to resist. And you know what? It's for the, your greater good. It's never for something bad. And I know oftentimes, like this Kickstarter, there are disappointments, but almost always you look back at them and you go, oh, thank God. I'm already thinking, you know what? I didn't put in enough money there because I wouldn't have made anything. All the money would have gone to the printer and the artist, and I hopefully would have had enough for postage. <laughs> and so now I'm thinking bigger and I'm like, you know, I should, I should make it bigger just so that <laughs> when this is done, I, I actually get something out of it. You know, so is that why I failed? I don't know, but I do feel like maybe the timing was off. Maybe something was not, you know, the way the universe thought it should be. And so it's not a failure. It's just a try again. And I think about, you know, how many times you maybe have a relationship that ends in a way that leaves you not feeling good. You wanted that relationship to work. Oh my gosh. And then a few months later, you meet the love of your life. Thank God you didn't marry that other person, right? <laughs> right? Oh my gosh. And that happens all the time throughout your life. You can get very disappointed about a job, a job opportunity that maybe doesn't go your way. And, and you think, well, I was perfect for that job. Why didn't this happen? Come on, universe. But then a month later, here is really a much better job with better benefits and your starting pay is going to be more. And you go, Oh, that's why that other shit, that's why they picked someone else for that other job. Thank goodness. Cause you wouldn't have even applied for this one. You would have been working at that other one, right? So that is divine timing at work. And once you recognize the divine timing, it makes it, at least for me, makes it less scary to step out of your comfort zone because if the timing's off, the timing's off. You have nothing to lose. You're not foolish. You, you're not, you know, all those things that voice tells you, that fear of failure, all that, it's all lies because the reality is even if it doesn't go quite the way you planned, it opens another door to something else that maybe you didn't have before and your world gets bigger right? There's that saying about my best life is right outside of my comfort zone, right? It just makes your comfort zone a little bit bigger. If you can master wrapping your brain around divine timing and how it works in your life, you can make better decisions for yourself so that you can be brave because you're not going to fail. You're going to grow, right? And when opportunities fall through, you don't have any control over whether this place hires you or someone else. You have absolutely no control. The only thing you have control over is how you react when you get that phone call. So maybe you do a great interview, you get a second interview, and then you get that phone call that you didn't get the job. And yes, it's disappointing. It is. It sucks. But if you can wrap your brain around the divine timing, it's so much easier to go, well, thank God I didn't get that job because obviously a much better one is coming, right? That's what understanding divine timing can do for you because you're, you were made to succeed. We weren't put here to, to struggle. You are made to succeed, but we can't always see the big picture. And when we manifest, if you think about that law of attraction and you're putting out what you want, 
it puts ripples out everywhere, right? So it's not really realistic to think that if you just go, okay, I want this and poof, it shows up because everybody's doing that, right? So for the universe to get just the right thing, they've got to put lots of dominoes in the right spot so that it can fall for you. So it, it's not that you failed, it's that Maybe the timing was off. Maybe you were pushing for something and there is something better that you're not seeing. That happens a lot in relationships when I do readings for people who are in a relationship and, and the relationship has been going bad for a really long time, but they don't want to lose it. And the reality is maybe it's going bad for a long time because there is somebody much better and the universe can't bring them into your life because you're clinging to this one because you're afraid you're afraid that you'll be alone, right? So if you can embrace that divine timing and embrace that your spirit guides and angels will not let anything bad happen to you, then you can control how you react to it, right? My goal in this talk tonight was to let you know that if you're thinking about doing something and you're afraid, try really hard to just commit to it because that is what will get things moving for you. And then even if it doesn't work out, you didn't fail, just your timing was off and now you've learned all of these things and now you're ready for this new opportunity that's gonna walk into your life, right? So you don't have to be afraid. I know it's easy for me to say because I, I have that voice too. I struggle to make it shut up. But when I posted on my profile about, you know, what's, if, if you could go after your dream, what, what's the only thing holding you back from going after your dream today, right now? And the number one thing was negative self-talk and fear of failure. And it, it, it makes me sad because we put ourselves in these little cages because we're so afraid that we're going to fail. And so if you don't try, then you do fail, right? So that voice is totally lying to us. The Manifesting Magic Mastermind is not only will you learn a bunch of different metaphysical tools to help you with manifesting, but once a week we're going to have a Zoom, a Mastermind Zoom, where all of these amazing women all are visualizing each other having their goal. Because you think about the law of attraction as you think about, you know, your thoughts become things and you think about it and you put it out in the universe. And I've been manifesting with clients one-on-one -on -one and the things they're, man it's, it's amazing. <laughs> I'm just like, what? And it's just been me and them envisioning them having it, me meditating on them having it. And I'm just thinking if we had 10 of us like, powering through once a week seeing this thing come to fruition oh my gosh you guys <laughs> so it is going to be magic but anyway that's coming in january there is an application it's not because you're not good enough i swear <laughs> the application is just so i know what your goals are so that i can be sure that i think it's going to help because if it's not I, I don't want anybody to be in there going shoot this isn't going to help me that's the only reason but anyway that's going to be starting in january because i felt like you know, for the new year and we all have goals for the new year, but, but I, I just think it's going to be powerful, <laughs> but, but don't be afraid. Don't let that voice take things away from you, take opportunities away from you. Don't let it tell you, you know, that, that you're not good enough. When I was thinking, I've been thinking about this tarot deck for years. <laughs> So all these little things like which starter came out from Kickstarter and I thought, oh, and then my cover artist got me in touch with this illustrator who is so fantastic and gets me. And I'm like, okay, okay, th this is going to happen. But the self-talk in my head was, Lisa, you don't know enough people to raise that much money. Lisa, you have never written a nonfiction book. You really think you're going to finish this one? These were the voices in my head. Why would anyone want to hear from you? They want fiction from you. Nobody wants nonfiction from Lisa. These were the voices in my head. But I was watching the signs and I'm like, I feel like it's time. And then it didn't work. And I'm like, dang it. What did I misunderstand? 
but I don't think I did. I think I learned how to do this better and I learned that I probably didn't ask for enough money anyway. And so I think in January it will go. And again, I could have curled in a ball and been super embarrassed and put a blanket over my head going, no one see that I failed. I talked to you guys about this all month and I failed. But I don't feel like I did. I really don't. I feel like the timing was off and it's going to be, you know, January is going to be the time. Oh my gosh, we're going to have the mastermind in January. What? <laughs> Yes, so maybe the mastermind's gonna, everybody putting it out there in the universe gonna make it happen. I didn't even think about that. Anyway, but don't let that self-talk make you not try. Love yourself enough to try. If that's the only thing you get from this chat tonight, put that in your heart because really the only way you can fail is not to try. Even though that voice tells you you're going to look foolish, people are going to think you're dumb, you know, whatever it is that it's telling you, it's lies. It's lies. It's just trying to keep you from having those things. And the universe wants you to have those things, right? Even though I did that zombie 5K, I have never done another one, never felt driven to do it, but I was so darn proud of myself. I had such a good time. I posted that when that memory came up, I'm covered in mud. It was disgusting, but I have never felt stronger and more powerful than that day. I'm so grateful that I did it. You know, so, so stretch yourself. It doesn't have to be something that's going to make you a millionaire. I think a lot of times we put in our head, well, if it doesn't make money, then why do it? And it, there's a million reasons why you should do it. You're allowed to be happy. You're allowed to have joy. So don't let that voice stop you because you can't fail unless you don't try. And you learn so much when you try these new things. So, so don't let that voice steal that from you. Could divine timing prepare you for when the right time is coming? It might not be now, but soon. And how do you know when? That's a great question. So like I was telling you, all these little synchronicities were all happening around that tarot deck. So I thought October was going to be the month. I thought that's the time for it to happen. And obviously my timing was a little off, but perhaps <laughs> I needed to do that test run so that I'd be ready for it to go in January. Does that make sense? So once you start seeing the signs, try it now. Your timing may be a little off, but it will get you ready for when the time's right. If you notice all these signs telling you to do it, why not? Right? Why not do it now? Because the more signs you see, the more the universe wants you to go that direction. I hope that makes sense. So I think that it can be a procrastination sometimes if you want every sign. You want to see a neon sign that says, do it now. That can become a procrastination technique so that you don't have to do anything. Well, I haven't seen enough signs yet. And when I see eight signs, then, then I'll know. <laughs> and, and then it just becomes a procrastination tool. Another thing you can do if you're really concerned about the divine timing of it all is meditate. And when you meditate, you, you're going to go to, you know, your happy place and you're going to ask your guides and angels about this issue that you have coming up. And can you send me a sign tomorrow to let me know if I should do this next month? You can definitely do that and ask. But if you see that sign, you can't go, okay, could I just have one more sign? <laughs> You know, you gotta, you gotta actually do it because sometimes we can use signs to procrastinate because we're scared because that voice is so loud, you know? So, so I would say if you're already seeing signs, go for it. No reason to wait for the signs to say right now. <laughs> so some tips for making that voice be quiet is journaling. You can write down in your journal, why not? Why not? And when you do that, you're going to write down underneath, you know, what could possibly go wrong? What could go wrong? Because sometimes when we actually write those out, we go, well, that's no big deal. Really? Really? That's, that's it? What? I mean, it, using the zombie 5k, I could have written down, well, I'll lose my $55 entry fee. I could feel foolish because I didn't finish. 
I could twist my ankle. And then I look at that list and I'm like, well, <laughs> I mean, it'd be a bummer to lose $55, but in the grand scheme of things, nothing. I could twist my ankle walking out to my car. <laughs> so, and, and going to look foolish. There's going to be thousands of people there. No one's going to be looking at me. And when you see that list all written out, suddenly that voice sounds really, I mean, really, it's not scary anymore. It's like, you know, they say the monsters are scarier when you can't see them. That's why they didn't show you the Jaws shark for so long in the movie, because it was scarier for you to not know. That's what that voice is like. It tells you these vague things about how bad it's going to be. But then when you actually write out what, why not? What are the bad things that could happen? And you write them out and you're like, oh, well, that's not that scary. Let's do this. So that's one way to make the voice be quiet. Another way is to push push back, write all the reasons why you want to. And maybe if you have so many reasons why you want to, you're not going to listen to that voice anymore. So those would be two techniques for making it be quiet. I do struggle with anxiety a lot. And if any of the rest of you do, try really hard to remember you know, that, that everything is in divine order. Just that one line, everything is in divine order. That usually makes the things mellow out for me. I don't need to know the plan. I don't need to know what's going to happen. I just need to know that it's all in divine order. Everything that is supposed to happen is happening. And if it's something happening that I don't like, it's probably because there's going to be something amazing and this is just pointing me in that direction, right? So try really hard to keep that. It's all, everything is in divine order. That can really help to mellow out that, <laughs> that voice and anxiety. Thank you so much for being here. I hope it was helpful and I will see you next week. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Metaphysical Manifesting Podcast with Lisa Kessler. If you have questions or comments, or if you'd like to work with Lisa to manifest your dreams, you can connect with her through her website at metaphysicalmanifesting.net. That's also where you can claim your free weekly tarot reading and manifesting tips. Make sure you subscribe or follow the Metaphysical Manifesting Podcast on your favorite podcasting site so you never miss another episode. As Lisa likes to say, we can make magic when we bring the universe into the equation. Remember, you don't have to do it alone. If you'd like more information about Lisa, Metaphysical Manifestation Mentorship, or the Manifesting Magic Mastermind, visit her website at metaphysicalmanifesting.net.